Today I want to talk about tying D-loops and how to set that to for your right size. Um, so I've been shooting my bow for about the last couple weeks now and I've noticed that my anchor just isn't quite feeling right and that's the position of my release hand on my face. It feels a little bit too far for it. So I'm going to cut off the loop I have on here now and probably try one about a quarter inch longer and uh, see how if that fits a little bit better. Uh, so I thought I'd take this opportunity to show you guys how I tie a loop properly and get it to that perfect length. We're going to take the one end that's burnt here and we're going to make a little loop out of it like that. So you got the two sides. You're going to take the burnt end. That one's going to be not, it's going to be closest to the bottom wheel, not on the inside. We're going to pop the long piece of string through that loop hole we made like that and pull them tight so they're nice and snug up against that bottom knock set. Now, for the rest of it, we're going to go over the top with the loop material, bring the cut in on the inside of that top loop, pull that snug or just up against that top knock set. Take this part of the string around the top of the loop, go back underneath the bow string where we make that other loop and we're going to pull it through there and pull that tight against that inside string and that top knock set. Now what you're going to notice here is that both ends that are going to be burnt are the furthest away from the arrow and the knock set here. Okay, That puts the loop string on the inside, right? Your D-loop is actually coming out of the inside there, so that pulls against the string and it's not pulling over top of the knot. When it pulls over top of the knot, it's really hard for the knot to get tight and loose. Like, it, it won't tighten up, it'll stay loose, and you'll get a lot of rotation on the loop on the string and your people won't come back straight. So I'm gonna leave this a little bit looser than my last loop. And I know my last loop was three quarters of an inch, so we're gonna try to get this one, I think, up to a full inch. I think I need a full quarter inch longer on the loop. So to finish the top one, I'm going to cut it about a quarter inch outside of where it goes through the loop. And I'm going to do the same thing I did when I started, just fluff up the end. And I, you know, as I keep pressure with my finger against the back of the loop, so it's not going to push the loop through that hole, then you're going to be fighting to get it back out. Because I wanted to have as much as possible when I burn, so I'm not actually burning the loop itself, I'm just burning the frayed ends. Same thing, we're going to be careful, start a little bit away, work our way in slowly until it starts to melt, let it get bubbly there, and it does. Let it cool a little bit, push the lighter flat against it, see so you have a nice flat surface to hold the loop onto, and let it cool some more. Now we've got a little loop there, we're not quite finished yet, we have to tighten her up with our loop pliers. Okay, we go in there, I know this knock set's correct, so I already set it up for the arrows and it was. And again, as I'm tightening it, I'm just trying to see to make sure that it's still straight with the peep. Right? We don't want to tie our loop off center of the peep because when we go to pull the string back, it's going to pull the peep crooked. And I'm going to give it a good cinch down there. That definitely looks longer than the last one. We'll measure it up. And yeah, we got pretty much exactly a full inch here now, which is perfect, which is exactly what we wanted. So. Hopefully that'll solve it and hopefully you learned how to tie a loop today.